Tonnet Fund. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with an old friend, Paul Mather, who's standing in front of a rig that I've never seen before. This is something, now we know the full load is float, Paul, but we don't know this gear retract system. The prior system of amphibious Lotus floats is, well, a kind of a little busy prop, uh, proposition. Yeah. This looks a lot cleaner. What are we looking at here, Paul? Well, you know, we've been flying full Lotus floats for going on 30 years or better. And uh, how, the weak point on the whole float was the retract if you even had one or could put one on. So since the company was sold to Zen Air, the uh, guys up there at the Zen Air company came up with a new set of quad retract gear and that this is the ones that go out the front that are full castering ah, okay. and we steer them by the the hydraulic brakes that uh, are for turning brakes the uh, the mechanism uh, in the main gear is built into the box right behind the step like a traditional fiberglass or aluminum float but we still have the uh, beautiful air inflated rubber floats for safety and and uh, ease of use and low cost. Yeah, the floats have always been excellent. They're commonly, not, not always, but they're frequently used as just straight floats, no amphibious gear. That's right. Because they're such durable things uh, from that company, which is now taken over by Zen Air, as you said. But they used to have a center uh, nose center wheel, wheel, which was always or, a little... A wide tail dragger stuff with cables and different it pipes. It busy and busy it didn't look as strong as this looks. So this is quite a piece of work they've done here. And what you've got here, Paul, you told me, is the first one. This is the first set from Canada. We got it about a week ago. Okay. We uh, put it together, brought it down to show it, and we'll be putting it on an airplane at N Squared and we'll be flying it around here in the next few weeks. Yeah, because you're down in a country where uh, there's a whole lot of uh, waterborne operations going on i know and you got the weather that they don't have because they're still getting snowed on up there poor guys right. it snowed about a foot when they uh, box it up and put it on the truck <laughs> you get a little snow in the back of it yeah there you go. <laughs> well is i it, think we had to go back and yeah okay is it electric operated or yeah. hydraulic or? yeah the uh the floats are uh, have a little have electric motors on them <clears throat> one motor per float which retracts both wheels so there's two motors four wheels and uh, each float is integrated by itself and uh, it weighs about 100 pounds with the gear. Oh, really? So you only add 200 pounds, 100 pounds for each float. Okay, now, as, as amphibious gear goes, that's pretty, pretty modest. Pretty modest, that's correct. Yeah, well, let's go back and I'll retract the gear. Yeah. Okay, uh, now in an app actual application, of course, you're going to have this control mechanism somewhere up in the cockpit yeah, where you can get at it and so forth. Mm -hmm. But just to give us a demonstration of it here, you put this together just to take to the show. So let's go ahead and see it work. Well, and then you can explain to me what's going on here. Yep, we have the uh, just a 12 volt battery like any airplane. And when we push the button down to gear down, the electric motor pushes the main wheel down with an over to center lock. And then this tube. Ah, okay, there's the over the center on Yep, this tube pushes the uh, forward gear down with an over the center lock. So now at any time you can go pull on the gear and it's not going to move. And uh, again, we have a large brake, good aircraft tires in the well. Oh, yeah. And these are rated at 1,450 pounds. Okay, so this, so will this, handle, this can handle any, uh, any LSA product. Yeah. That's correct. Now, are they going to be offering stainless steel? Because a lot of it's going into salt water operation. That's correct. This is a prototype set made out of carbon and uh, aluminum. And the subsequent ones will be stainless steel apparatus and bolts. So that adds some weight to it when they do that bolt? It might add a pound or two. But okay, uh, I too bad. No. And now, you got to look at this thing here for a second. This is, they're not one big bladder, I know. It's a series of bladders. Uh, and you can kind of tell by the uh, air, in, air input points, the trader, uh, a whole series of those. Um, but what they've done here is they obviously displaced one of those bladders or, or made it into two pieces, I guess, and stuck all this right in where That's I correct. wouldn't have thought you could even do that or would want right. to do that. But what they did is built a bulkhead box, and the bulkhead goes to the step. Keep the steps firm and inflated. Ah, okay, this is just after the step. Yeah, after the step, okay. that's correct. It also happens to be the right place for the wheel, I know. Yep. Yeah. And 
move at a pretty moderate speed. Yeah, they do. That came up there pretty fast, actually. Yep. And yet, uh, it, it just seems like when it's operating here, this is, as you said, once the gear's down, it's going to stay down. It's That's not, this is not going to balloon back up just because you put some pressure on it or well, something with a, with a firm landing or whatever. That's right. They're very simple over the center locks. And, and does this bring the wheel up uh, without me crawling down there and looking? Does it bring it up all the way three, behind the behind the step and three inches above it? Okay, so and it's, it goes so it's down well out of it then. Four inches below the step, so you have four inch space between the wheel and the step okay. for a ground handling. It was a pretty good. So the total stroke length is about seven inches. That's then. correct. So and what's, the, what size floats are they going to be offering this in? Well, they did it on the LSA float, which is a 1450. They will be modifying and making this box for any of the floats. Okay. You'll be able to get it on a 1220 or the 2100. So, you know, they're going to adapt it. Yeah, yeah, why not? I guess the concept works on any of them. They're yeah. just a little different in the size and shape of the various air bladders that make up this uh, this thing. But these floats have already proven themselves so well. This is great aluminum and, and uh, fiberglass or carbon floats. They're all great, but there's stuff in water, isn't there? That's right. There's branches, rocks, well, other, other things that you hope never to hit. And a seaplane pilot comes in and maybe cruises down the water that he's going to land on and is looking for that stuff. You worry about that in any float, but a lot less in a loaded kind of float. That's correct. In, in, can in Canada, we have to worry a lot, especially when we're on the frozen stuff. That's right. Frozen water is a little harder on the float. <laughs> uh, we we land and take these off on, on snow right on in Canada. Snow, yeah. With the hard bottom, what we do on the Gulf Coast here is uh, we run out to the Barrier Islands and we beach the airplane, just like a jet ski. You can get out and play around on the island, chase the crabs or whatever, fish, and just slide it around and get back in and go. Where so what we're looking at up here, I mean, that's soft. I can push in on that, but uh, for those that don't know the Lotus Flow, what is on the bottom there? Paul? It's got the uh, hard plastic that's about a half an inch thick that's okay. molded, and uh, so it's like a rubber ducky bolt. It's got the bottom like that. It's got the air sacs. There's only two and a half psi in each ah, one of the air right. sacs. That's, that's why I can push in on them that's fairly right. readily. Okay. But they look like a balloon blown up and yeah. they're very secure. They give a cushion as you're taking off on top. Right, also, also kind of a shock absorbing system. That's correct. And these guys kind of learned their trade because they made uh, bags, for lack of a better term, for putting out fires and doing other things, right? That's correct. In the very beginning, that's how the full lotus came is that they were an offshoot of another business as they, you say, they uh, picked up uh, water and did uh, fire retardant, and then they designed the float on after a rubber ducky boat. And they had all the technology in their factory. Then Full Lotus was sold to another company, and then Zen Air bought it from them. Ah, okay, so, so Zen Air is, and here's a company that's doing both aluminum floats for people to think that's a better decision for their airplane and full Lotus floats now. They kind of got it covered. That's right. And this is one of the most unique floats. And how long have these been around, Paul? Do you know the history of full Lotus? I flew the first one in 84. I was going to say, yeah, it was the mid-80s when we got involved. Well, so that's 30 years. 30 this years is the 30th already. anniversary of full Lotus then. Yep. Didn't even know that. So great stuff. And you're going to take one of these, this set of floats, I suppose, put them on your airplane, Paul. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your airplane and how you think it's going to work with these floats on it. Well, we utilize the uh, full loaded floats for our, our, our fixed gear aircraft now. And so with the with this uh, retract gear system, we're going to put these on, do the testing that Mike from Zen Air has requested us to do, kind of give them a thumbs up so they can continue and refine their production units. All right. Well, the biggest test will be the drop test. So okay. we'll have to drop it from about 10 feet and make sure it's flyable after it gets dropped. From 10 feet? Yep. Whoa, that's a... That's that grows. A, that's, that a grows. Pretty, uh, that's a pretty hefty test. Yep. So first, first of course, we're going to bang it around as much as we can, <laughs> install it at speed, and see what it does, you know, on the gear. And then with zero speed, you got to do the drop test, and that'll load the gear up the most. Yeah, that is a pretty brutal test. For yep. those people who don't know, that's a, that's a large drop, and at full growth, it's really going to test that thing. So. Well, we'll pay more attention to uh, Paul Mather and his efforts here. Uh, let's have a website address from you for your airplane company, and you're going to be you're going to be selling these as well, I presume. That's correct. I'm the it's distributor used. for the uh, Gulf Coast. Okay. And, and uh, where can we find you on the web, Paul? Alrighty, msquaredaircraft.com. All right. And then aircraftfloatsmanufacturing.com. All right. There you can get all the information. I've got lots of information about Paul's aircraft and some about full Lotus floats and other floats. You can find all that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Paul and me here at Ton of Fun.